Hey everybody, what's up? Okay. Anyway, I am about to talk about this. Do Ra 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 Volume 4 by Re Ogo Narita, which I'm sure I've probably mispronounced since I'm not very good at pronouncing Japanese names. You know, this is what's known as a light novel. And if you don't know what a light novel is, well, here is Wikipedia to tell you. A light novel is a style of Japanese novel primarily targeting middle and high school students. Blah, 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 blah. They are typically not more than 40,000 to 50,000 words long, the shorter ones being equivalent to a novella in U.S. publishing terms, and are rarely more than a few hundred pages, often having dense publishing schedules, are usually published in bun koban size, A6, 10.5 centimeters by 14.8 centimeters, and are often illustrated. The text is often serialized in anthology magazines before collection in book form. Okay. Yeah, so basically it's like a short book written for young adults, apparently. In Japan, this particular one, as with the, most of the light novels that get translated into English, has also been done as an anime and a manga, both of which were translated into English long before the novel, because even though the novel came first, because anime and manga are way more popular here in America. I, I've actually seen some of the anime. I eventually stopped watching it because... Uh, Decided I wanted to read the novels and I'd rather not have a little, little, any more spoiled than I have to. So technically everything in this one I more or less knew because I think I was about two or three books ahead in the anime when I stopped watching it. I don't know exactly. Uh, anyway, uh, I really like the anime. anime. I haven't read the manga, not really interested in that as much. So I thought I would read the books, and I really enjoyed the first three. So I pre-ordered the fourth one, and got it the day it was released. Now I'm going to give you a little reading. Only, in, unlike I usually do, instead of starting at the beginning of the first chapter, I'm actually going to read a scene I really like from the prologue. It basically features two people, an assass a hitman, assassin guy named Machine Killer, was it? Something like that. And a serial killer known as Hollywood. And they, you know, this is about their meeting and what happens. Right after the hitman and the killer first faced off, the hitman picked up the nearest object he could use as a murder weapon, like he always did. On a bench nearby sat some rather unsavory looking young men. They looked like your typical street toughs, eating their rice ball dinner from a plastic convenience store bag. For some reason, there was an out-of-place briefcase sitting next to them, and the hitman grabbed it without hesitation. It was instantaneous. So fast that it was beyond the processing power of the typical human being, with flowing precision and maximum efficiency. And the, the murder machine hitman grabbed the briefcase like a gust of wind, and with perfect timing, perfect angle, and perfect velocity swung it toward Hollywood's chin. But before the briefcase intersected with the killer, Hollywood's manual chop entered from an unnatural angle and tore through the briefcase as if it were soft tofu. Papers, bills, a broken pen, and the drops of ink from within it sprayed outward. With honed reflexes, each combatant caught sight of the phenomenon in slow motion. They each had a perfect vision of the other. Next to them sat the dumbfounded hooligans, determining that they posed no threat the two killers instead focused entirely on the other. They had to be evenly matched. Even if they weren't, it was the kind of fight in which victory or defeat could be determined by any number of variables. Their brains subconsciously worked away at the calculations, but their conscious minds stayed perfectly focused. The two killers, alike in many ways, launched themselves into an orgy of slaughter. Launched themselves entirely and unfortunately. They threw their concentration, their caution, and everything into that moment, which is why the two murderers failed to notice that of the two owners of the briefcase sitting dumbfounded on the bench, one was wearing a bartender's outfit, 
despite not working at a bar. As they were outsiders to E.K. Bucaro, they also did not realize that there were people at E.K. Bucaro that one must never pick a fight with. People whom no one should ever, ever challenge to a fight, no matter if they were a hitman, or a serial killer, or a president, or an alien, or a vampire, or a headless monster. Yeah. Now see, now that's some good action. That's why I like this book. It's kind of weird. I mean, you've got all kinds of weird characters, like the, the guy who beat them up with the park bench. He's one of the major recurring characters in the series. He is the one person you don't want to pick a fight with. Yeah, I mean, basically, they grab his briefcase, he flips out, rips out a park bench, and beats the crap out of him with it. Which, actually, I think I cut it off right before they hit the, he hit him with the park bench. But that's what happens. He rips up the park bench he's sitting on, which is bolted to the ground, and hits him. His name is Sasuke. He's a person you don't want to mess with. And there are all kinds of weird characters in this series. I mean, one of the major characters is Selchi, who is actually, I think, more, was... It's so originally more or less the focus of the series, though it's tends to by this point drift a little bit to where some of the other characters tend to be the focus, or at least share the spotlight with her. Seldy is a Doolahan, or Doolahan, which is an Irish fairy that has no head, drives around in a, in a, in a on a horseback, horse-drawn carriage, and supposedly. It's one of those death omen things. Only for some reason, she her head got stolen. And, yeah, because here she they carry her on the her head. Her head got stolen, but and taken to Japan. She follows after, and now is a headless rider, who is in love with a an unlicensed doctor. And then you also have you know various gang you know, thugs you know, who are basically you know. The Japanese equivalent of gangs, but they're, they seem to be a lot less violent than American ones, really. And you know, you got high school kids, including one who is possessed by a cursed sword. And then you know, you got Hollywood, and there's an information broker who's like a behind-the-scenes puppet master. And like I said, the best part about this series really is the characters, because there are a lot of really cool characters in this series. And basically, it seems like every book they add more. I mean, this one they added the two twin sisters of, yeah, two twin sisters who are younger sisters of the information broker I was talking about. And they don't really get along with him very well, and they're even weirder than he is. But, you know, they're actually cool characters, even if they're not in it all that much. Even the minor characters are really interesting. That's the thing I love about this book. It's got great characters, weird plots go all over the place, even if they're actually fairly focused, sort of, I don't know, I'm not going to explain this, it's Japanese, they tend to be a bit weird by American standards. Yeah, you know, basically the whole series is set in Ikebukuro, which is, I believe, part of Tokyo, in Japan. I don't think there are any other Tokyos I know of anyway, but, you know. And all kinds of weird things happen. This particular one, the story mostly focuses around Seldy, the headless rider, who has had a bounty placed on her head by a an entertainment organization because they want her captured alive so they can, I don't know, make money by exhibiting her or something. I don't know. The guy who came up with the idea is kind of an idiot, so it, who knows exactly what the heck he was thinking. And this causes all kinds of chaos, you know, she gets chased around by biker gangs and various other characters, most of whom are her friends, end up getting into trouble too, and, and there's all kinds of weird fighting, you know, plus there's this side thing about the serial killer who is actually not as bad a person as you'd think for a serial killer. And it's also actually a girl, and ends up falling in love with another character, and sort of. And even the hitman is becomes a, more of a character. I mean, he's not as well, bad a guy either. Not a really good guy, not either, but you know. And I just really like these books. I don't know why, but I do. I really recommend anybody who likes a weird 
story with lots of supernatural elements. I check it out. I mean, it's even hard to classify this in a genre, I think. If I had to, I'd probably classify it as urban fantasy. But even that is maybe stretching it a bit. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to give it four gas masks. Because I really like it. And that's it for now. I'll be back hopefully in a few days with more book reviews. Until then, keep on reading. If you like this video, please click subscribe or watch some of my older videos. If you think the book I reviewed sounds interesting, buy a copy. There are always links to the Amazon store in the description for this book and any other books I mentioned. If you have any suggestions on other books I could read, or any other comments, queries, insults, or anything else you want to say, please feel free to mention it in the comments section.